Old Roneville is very small. It's about 15 acres wide. But a lot of the people that are members of the tribe do not even know who Roneville is, where it is. Roneville Rancheria, which is the basis of this tribe here. We were not recognized for years and years and years. Yeah, when I started here 19 years ago, it was a trailer and a few houses. And we were only on one side of the road. I grew up across the street before the casino was there, before the hotel was there, um, before Bear River had anything. We only started with 60 acres over here. That was the first, first one. And then it kind of developed all over the place. The trials of just getting us to this point was long and hard. Our tribes come a long ways. We were a pretty poor tribe. We were a small tribe. We're very large now. We probably have about 600 tribal members now, and half of them are children. Culturally, they need to learn how they're connected with each other and how we're all from here and that, and, and, and that we can be a good people together. Learning about their culture is really super important because it puts us where we kind of belong, you know, and not just hearing that drum, but making songs and letting that be in our hearts. When I was growing up, I knew I was Native American, but I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know my culture. I didn't know any of that. And so I think that's really important for the youth to learn is like who they are. So that way when they grow up, they're not wondering who they are, where they belong in the world. Teachers and educators and administrators and their biggest thing was that they didn't have accurate materials to teach. And they didn't have anything on most local tribes here because it's just not out there. As of late, we've been going through some hardships. We've lost a lot of our elders. We really have, and it's really been very difficult. Traditionally, we've been or storytellers. You know, there's never been the written document. It's been the oral traditions passed down from generation to generation. If we can get stuff on that, actually get people to speak on that, it's another thing for the oral traditions to be passed down for the kids that, if the elders pass on, or, or myself, that we pass that on to our youth, and that, that way it can never die. So we applied for an ILMLS grant to go into local school libraries and replace them with accurate materials by actual native authors. And then it kind of snowballed into this giant project to capture the real story of Bear River and letting the people tell it. With the Oculus, it kind of just went together. So we kind of put the two ideas together of telling Bear River story and using it to be taught in schools. Going through rural native communities, you know what I'm saying, and helping them tell their tale is, you know, it's extremely exciting to me and, you know, film and the modern age of digital technology that we're in is just ideal for preserving things. We lost our fishing and hunting rights as a small tribe. We're not connected to the river at all. That's where I learned how to eel. It was the best time of my life. <laughs> but the kids never learned how to clean eels and how to smoke them how to hang them, and that's an art all itself. People don't really realize how much history they have in back of them. Not all of it's good, but they, all, they have to learn from that. Know their history from where they came from. Don't forget who they are.